to you live on Radio Chris Cabri, uh, the best radio station in town, and that is for the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. We're pleased to be here with you once again to share with you the gospel of the kingdom, and we've been going through the book of Revelation. Yes, we have. Um, and, and up to now, we've been through Revelation chapter 1 through to Revelation chapter 6, and today we are now going to be looking at or focusing on chapter 7. Chapter 7 talks about the sealing of the 12 tribes of Israel. The sealing of the tribes of Israel of 144,000, 12,000 from each of the 12 tribes. It continues on from chapters 5 and 6. And it all, all, in other words, it, it runs parallel with chapters 5 and 6. So Revelation chapter 7 needs to be read in parallel with chapter, chapters 5 and 6 because it runs alongside them. So you can actually tie in the meanings to, um, to them. So we've got Brother Heon here. Um, James is also recording um, the show. So later on tonight, I will actually load it up to our church website. And I would say the other videos that I've put on, They've had so many visitors. Including myself. Yes, so many visitors. I mean, the one that we put on, uh, the last show we did, it was Monday, wasn't That's it? That's correct, yeah. And that video has had something like 62 hits. Now I look today, 62. Uh, it's unbelievable. It's actually overtaken. Now, the last video we, we, the last recording we did, the last chapter, that was actually about, now let me take my mind back. The seals, um, the seals being broken, yeah. Yes. The seven seals being 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 actually open, um, and the and the riders on the different horses. Yes. Uh, the rider on the white horse being Antichrist. The rider on the red horse being who? Ian? Can you remember? The rider of the red horse bringing war, and bloodshed. Then you've got the rider on the black horse. You've got them. No, okay. Yeah, bringing. Famine, extreme famine, the weighing of bread and so forth, famine. Right. Yes. And then and, and economic collapse. The rider on the black horse means economic collapse. And then the pale horse, which means what? Death. Um so 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 we looked at that and I've had so many views of that. All the previous well not all of the previous but but particular teachings that I've done which from the book of Revelation, I've actually uploaded them to our website at www acog7.org.uk so you can actually have a view and have a listen to um, our pre previous pre-recorded se sessions yeah so we've, we've, we've done them live in the studio and then actually loaded them up to the website and, and they are really informative particularly in times that we're living in now where we're seeing what the Bible talks about in the book of Revelation actually being fulfilled before our eyes do you know something brother Hume? The Bible actually says that the generation that is actually alive when the Jewish nation returns back to Israel and becomes a nation, becomes a people again, will be the nation that actually sees Jesus. That Jesus will actually come within that generation. And a generation, according to the Bible, is three score years and ten. It's seventy years of age, a generation. It also says this again in the book of Psalms. A generation is seventy years. Many Bible theologians and scholars say it's 40, but no, a biblical generation is 70 years. That's why um, Paul said that, you know, a, li a man's life expectancy is three score years and ten, and if it be more than that, it will be by reason of pain. So it's 70 years that God has given human beings to live. So also, pretty familiar, we're halfway past that. <laughs> <laughs> We've got past the halfway line, and we're all coming up to it. But I, I would say that, you know, uh, it, it, you know, the Bible says that those, so basically Israel, uh, the Jews went back to Israel in 1948. Yes, and became a nation. And became a nation. Yes. Israel is depicted in the scriptures as the fig tree nation. They are actually God's chosen people. Yes. And a lot of people don't like to hear this, but they are. Biblically, physical covenants, physical covenants and spiritual covenants belong to the Jewish nation. Right. And we're going to see that as we read Revelation chapter 7 and go through it. And the Gentiles Correct. And the Bible actually says that the nation that is around, yeah, people born from the time the Jews went back into Israel, became a nation, the 15th of May 1948. And the, the people born from that day, from was 70 years from that, that they will be alive. They will actually see the coming in of the Messiah. So we are very, very close to the end of time. Yes. 
And if we're so close, then it means the Antichrist must be alive. He must be around. Being restrained. Yes, yes, being restrained. And what is the Antichrist being restrained by? Well, the man of sin. The Holy Spirit. And the church. And the church. But when the church has moved out the way, when the church stops preaching and saying what is right and wrong and what is acceptable and unacceptable, then the Antichrist moves in. Yeah. That's the teaching and that's the big biblical view. So theoretically, we should still be alive when Jesus returns. Yeah. Yeah. Isn't that glorious? Dynamic, yes, yeah. and, uh, I, and just as we're about to go into the study, I'd like to share a testimony of a, a beloved sister, very, very prophetic. Um, you know, and this almost confirms the word of God, what the Bible actually teaches. She hasn't worked, had the opportunity to do much work because various things happen in people's lives, so you can't work. And um, she was really worried about her pension, what she's going to do when it comes to pension time, and she's my age. Yeah. I said, goodness me, when it comes to pension time, I won't be able to draw anything because I haven't paid anything in. I've been taking out and not putting in. But that this person was very, very committed to the Lord in the past, and the Lord appeared to her one night and said, what are you worrying about? You don't have to worry about pension. And then the Lord showed that he's coming, that he'd be coming within her lifetime, and I believe it. Yeah. He be coming before she has time to die. Yeah. And I believe if you look around the world today and all what's happening, the world cannot continue on the way it is. There's distress of nations, perplexity. Even in nations. our modern society where we're living in today, that we're living in today, and the so called developed societies are, are collapsing. Front of the newspaper today, very well known tabloid, big writing, big 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 uh, head heading heading a letter, heading basically saying that one week to save the Eurozone, one week to save the Zorro, Eurozone, front page headline, newspaper, popular newspaper, not one of the, 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 the every general days, but a proper tabloid press, had on the headline there, one week to save the Euro, it's also in the Guardian as well, the Guardian, the Guardian newspaper, so it's very, very serious, yeah. very, very serious, yes. and they say if, for example, the Eurozone goes down, then the rest of the world is going to collapse and go down with it. This is what the Bible talks about in Revelation chapter 6, when the black horse rides, economic ca catastrophe, economic collapse, worldwide, worldwide. And that's the third seal. And that's the third seal. Yes, that's the, the third seal. seal. That's literally the third yeah. seal. But the, uh, it's terrible. But the oh, hell, praise the name of the Lord. It, 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 it's shocking. And incidentally, Antichrist will arise uh, in a time of economic and financial chaos. He will actually sort out, or kind of, or almost sort out the economic, because when Antichrist rises, during the time he rises, the world will be in a state of economic flux, not knowing what to do. The economic uh, stock markets and so forth, all going out of control, and then he will stand up and come up with a solution, and the solution will work. He'll save, save the stock market, he'll save all of this, and prevent the for Christ, and then people will accept him as a, a pseudo-ruler within certain nations, within the European and as well as the world empires, they'll accept him. I say solve the world's problem and they'll accept that and he'll become ruler, but then he's going to bring the world to utter destruction and to an end. Yes. And God is going to allow him a certain amount of time, the Antichrist, three and a half years. He'll have seven years of reign in total, yes, but the final three and a half years of his reign will be terror, 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 terror all over the world. Because he makes a pact in the course of Israel. He, he does. And then he breaks the pact. He breaks the pact. Yeah, and he goes after Israel and the church. Uh, th that, that's right. Because he knows that if he can remove Israel from its, his land and destroy the church, he'll possibly, but potentially, be able to delay or prevent the Lord's return. Yeah. So that's what he moves out to do. That particularly goes against God's people and the Jewish people. Yes. Anyway, let's, let's move on with the studies as we do. Now, we're looking at Revelation chapter 7 this evening. Now, Hion, if you could read, uh, go through and read verse 1, please. Revelation chapter 7, verse 1. And after these things I saw four angels standing on the four corners of the earth, what a sight, holding the four winds of the earth, that the wind should not blow on the earth, nor on the sea, nor on any tree. So we've got an angel here. Standing at an angel for each post of the earth, north, south, east, and west, the four corners of the earth. And they're holding the four wings. The four wings represent strife, represent trouble, re represent turmoil, re represent catastrophe, recommend 
we're literally talking about what we talk about in Revelation chapter 6 the four horsemen riding he's standing there and he's holding back these judgments these angels are standing and they're preventing the, 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 the judgment seals from coming down and afflicting certain individuals until something has been done so they are actually holding back the four winds of the earth or the judgments of God from being poured out that the wind should not blow on the earth the, the judgment wind of God should not blow on the earth nor on the sea nor on any tree read on verse 2 and I saw another angel ascending from the east having the seal of the living God and he cried with a loud voice to the four angels to whom it was given to hurt the earth and the sea so another angel, angel comes down from heaven now the word angel actually means messenger he, he comes down from heaven uh, sorry I saw another angel ascending from the east or coming from the east having the seal of the living God so he has the seal of the living God in other words a seal is something that you use to put your mark of authority on so he has the seal of God Almighty in his hand and he cried with a loud voice to the four angels standing who are basically standing on the four corners of the earth to whom it was given to hurt the earth and the sea and I want to point out here that God during his judgment or during his time of wrath he uses angels who are supernatural beings to punish wicked humanity on the face of the earth he uses angels to do that God doesn't do it himself he allocates specific angels to do the job of pouring out his judgment on the earth go ahead verse 3 saying hurt not to the earth neither the sea nor the trees till we have sealed the servants of our God in their foreheads so this angel is saying don't hurt anybody don't do any damage don't pour out God's judgments upon the earth until we have sealed the servants of God. In other words, so we have sealed those who are not to die. So we have sealed those who God wants to protect. And how is he going to seal them? The angel is going to put the seal of God in their forehead. A spiritual mark in their forehead. It's pretty ironic because in Revelation chapter 13, we talk about the mark of the beast, 666. And that mark, again, goes in the forehead. Here, the, the mark of God. God, before Satan actually marks out his people in their forehead, God marks out his people first for protection against his wrath. It's a little bit like when the children of Israel were in Egypt. In the book of Exodus, um, they applied the blood of a lamb to the doorposts of their houses or their dwelling places. Yeah. And when the destroying angel came along, or the angel of death came along, anyone who had where they came across the blood, the blood of a, of a lamb, on the doorpost of any house, he could not go into that house and kill anybody or do anything. And it wasn't the people in the house as to why he couldn't do it. Yeah. It was because of the blood over the doorpost. Yeah. So here, the Lord, this angel comes down and said, hold on, before the seven seals are broken. That's why I said, chapter seven needs to be read in parentheses with chapters five and six because it, it, chapter 7 goes back to should be between somewhere between chapter 4 and chapter 5 because then before you actually carry out the judgments I've got to seal the servants of our, of our God in their forehead in other words protection God's protection over them go ahead verse 4 and I heard the number of them which were sealed and they were sealed and hundred and forty and four thousand of all the tribes of the children of Israel. Now hold on a minute. Now this says, and they were sealed and hundred and forty and four thousand of all the tribes of Israel. So here all the tribes. Now many individuals say, oh, the, the, the Jewish nation is lost. Oh, we can't find the twelve tribes. The twelve tribes are lost. That's not true. Because when we look in this scripture, in several places in this scripture, the scripture talks about the 12 tribes. I mean, when, when, when the Assyrians came into the north, what happened? And they drove them out. What basically happened? Many of them went down to the, went, went down to the south of Israel. So I was running, And then when Babylon came to the south, many of them transported and went back up to the north. So the 12 tribes have always dwelt in the land. And I can actually show this here, literally, uh, quite seriously if we look at Matthew 10 and verse 
5 and 6. Matthew 10 and verse 5 and 6. It says, These twelve Jesus sent forth and commanded them, saying, Go not into the way of the Gentiles, and into any city of the Samaritans enter ye not, but go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Um, also, sorry, let's just look back here again. Praise the name of the Lord. So it says, Go back to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. And also, if we look at Acts chapter 26 and verse 7, and I'll read, and it says, This is Acts chapter 6 and verse 27, and it reads, Unto which promise our twelve tribes, instantly serving God day and night, hope to come, for which hope's sake, King Agrippa, I am accused of the Jews. So here, Paul, in Acts chapter 7 and Acts chapter what is it 7 sorry Acts chapter I don't know what chapter I'm on now this is unbelievable Acts chapter 26 and verse 7 Acts 26 and verse 7 um, the Apostle Paul is actually talking about the 12 tribes actually being there he makes reference to the 12, 12 tribes being there being alive and being well the 12 tribes have never ever been left, lost They've always been in the land, yeah. So he's actually talking about Jews that God is going to seal and he's going to and he's going to use and he's going to seal these Jews, fill them with the Holy Spirit and use them during the tribulation, during the time of great discontent all over the world to encourage the Christian people, to strengthen the Christian people, and to hold their hands and to give them the strength to go through. Because when we look at it. Um, the two witnesses which we'll get on to later on in the book of Revelation the two witnesses that actually that God actually is saying some people believe these two witnesses are Moses and Elijah or Moses and Enoch but whoever they are they again come out from the land of Israel they operate from within Jerusalem in actual fact which is in Israel and then the 12 tribes 12,000 seal of each tribe they are actually from Israel from Israel in within the land 12,000 of each tribe, they 144,000, and then God sends them out. So, so God sends out strength during the time of the tribulation from Israel. Now, if you could read down straight through to verse 8, please. Yeah, if Revelation, you, Re, yeah, Re, Revelation uh, chapter 7, verse 4 through to 8. If you could start up at verse 4 again and read all the way down to verse 8, please. Revelation chapter 4 through 8. And I heard the number of them which were sealed, and there were sealed a hundred and forty and four thousand of all the tribes of the children of Israel. Of the tribe of Judah were sealed twelve thousand. Of the tribe of Reuben were sealed twelve thousand. Of the tribe of Gath were sealed twelve thousand. Of the tribe of Asa were sealed twelve thousand. Of the tribe of Nephthali were sealed twelve thousand. Of the tribe of Manassas was sealed <coughs> twelve thousand. Of the tribe of Simeon was sealed twelve thousand. Of the tribe of Levi was sealed twelve thousand. Of the tribe of Issachar was sealed twelve thousand. Of the tribe of Zebulon was sealed twelve thousand. Of the tribe of Joseph was sealed twelve thousand. Of the tribe of Benjamin was sealed twelve thousand. Now, how many tribes are there? Have we read through? Twelve tribes. There are twelve. And are there any tribes missing there, Brother Hill? No. It's a very difficult word. The tribe of Dan? We have not mentioned the tribe of Dan. Mm -hmm. And also the tribe of Ephraim. In actuality, there are actually 14 tribes of Israel. There are actually 14 in total. If, because if you were to include the tribe of Dan and the tribe of Ephraim, you'd have 14. But here, they've included Joseph, because all the way through the scripture, because Joseph was actually put aside from his brethren, he goes missing from the tribe in, in the books of the Bible. But in Revelation, he's brought back in, because God never intended Joseph to be omitted and separated from the tribes. But nevertheless, nevertheless, two of the tribes are omitted, and that's the tribe of Dan and the tribe of Ephraim. Possibly the, the potential reason why um, the, the tribe of, uh, of Dan of, of, of Dan is missing here is possibly because of what happened in Judges chapter 18 
where the tribe of Dan, they were actually the first tribe to go into serious apostasy and then after that Ephraim followed. So they literally fell away. So here, in any case, but, but in any case, there are 14 tribes, but throughout the Bible, some of the times you, you have the tribe of Levi in, sometimes the tribe of Levi dropped. Uh, you won't have Joseph in added, then you won't have even, but literally, um, there's 14 tribes, but the, the scripture always um, pulls them around and illustrates 12, yeah? 12 mean the number of complete, completeness. Yeah. A anyway, um, so, so, so as I said, we've read that the tribes are there. Um, now, let's read on. Let's read on. Verse 9. Yes. And this I beheld, and lo. After this. Sorry. After this I beheld, and lo. A great multitude which no man could number of all nations, and kindreds, and people, and tongues, stood before the throne, and before the Lamb, clothed in white robes, and palms in their hands. And cried with a loud voice, saying, Salvation to our God, which sitteth upon the throne, and unto the Lamb. So, so as to now, we've now had the sealing of the twelve tribes. And they go out and they preach the gospel, and God protects them through the time of the Great Tribulation. And then after they're sealed, what happens, the interlude between verse 8 and 9, this is actually what takes place. The, the, the judgment seals are broken from the scroll they're actually broken the judgments are pulled out the trumpets and so on they're all pulled out and in verse 9 we see uh, the great multitude these are the multitude that have actually come through the tribulation that have passed through the sorrow maybe they've been martyred maybe they've been killed and so forth but this is them here being clothed in white robes meaning their righteousness and they're from all nations and from all kindreds and from all peoples and, and tongues. They're standing before the throne of God and before the Lamb clothed in white robes and palms in their hands. And cried with a loud voice saying, Salvation to our God which sitteth upon the throne and unto the Lamb. These are worshipping God because they've managed to come through the tribulation period and survive. So far, and keep their salvation intact, keep their soul intact, and they're thanking God for giving them victory and for carrying them through. There could be uh, tribulation martyred saints, I've martyred throughout the tribulation, but here they are standing before the throne of God. How do these come? Because during uh, the time of the great tribulation, you'll have the 144 evangelists sent out from Israel that will go throughout all the world, that will go throughout all the, the, the world to preach the gospel, to bring souls in, and here they are. Let's read on verses 11, please. Uh, verses 11 through to 12. And all the angels stood round about the throne, and about the elders and the four beasts, who fell down before the throne on their faces and worshipped God, saying, Amen. Blessing and glory and wisdom and thanksgiving, and honour and power and might be unto our God forever and ever. Amen. So here we have a scene of praise and, and, and th these angels are all just worshipping and they're praising God for his power to deliver his people in such a difficult time and to see them through. Then let's read on. And one of the elders, verse 13, Yes. And one of the elders answered, saying unto me, What are these which are arrayed in white robes? And whence came they? And I said unto him, Sir, thou knowest. Another day John Kirsten, Sir. Yes, yes. Thou knowest. And he said to me, These are they which came out of great tribulation, and have washed their robes, and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. So here we go. So again, as I earlier explained, those people around the throne, John, Hall, who are these people? And he said, and he said unto me, you know, these people that are around the throne with their palms in their hands and are worshipping. And he said to me, these are they which came out of great tribulation. In other words, they passed through the great tribulation. That's the final three and a half year time period when Antichrist gets severe, comes against Israel, comes against the church, demands everybody that they accept a number, 666, or a digit code, uh, or binary code, um, equivalent to 666 in, in the forehead or, or in the hand, yes. and that his image should be worshipped or that he should be acknowledged. He's in the last three and a half years, 
terrible time of war and pestilence going on. Uh, and these people in Revelation, these saints that are around the throne, he said, these are they which came out of Great Tribulation, so they actually passed through the Great Tribulation, yes. who were present on earth while the Tribulation was happening. So that's Israel and the Church. Israel and the Church. These are they which came out of Great Tribulation. They came out either by being martyred and dying, yes. or going through the, managing somehow to survive the full seven year period of the Great Tribulation, and then entering into the Millennium, millennium Kingdom here on earth and have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. So in other words, they've managed to keep themselves spotless from sin in, a, in an idolatrous world, a very sinful world. At the moment, we live in a very, very fallen and very, very sinful world yeah. and a very, very dangerous place worldwide. But the, the scripture says that there will be a remnant of people who will manage through the grace and through the power of the Holy Ghost to keep themselves pure and not to be corrupted or polluted by what they see going on in the world. Um, read it, because read on. Verse 15. Therefore are they before the throne of God, and serve him day and night in his temple. And he that sitteth on the throne shall dwell among them. Hold it there. Therefore are they before the throne of God. Now, being before the throne of God, it's, it's only for those in exalted positions. For those who are rulers, like you've got the four beasts around the throne, you've got the elders around the throne, or in other words, the council of God. But now, the, 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 this massive congregation or congregation of people are around the throne of God in heaven in an exalted position because they've managed to survive and be faithful to God throughout the tribulation period. And I can tell you this God is faithful, and if God says He will do something, He will do it. He will do it. Heaven is real, hell is real. And I invite everybody who's listening to my voice, there is a, a, a video, a live recorded video on YouTube by the name of Angelica, the surname is, first, uh, anyway, the first name is Angelica, but if you go to YouTube and you type Angelica, Angelica, visit to hell. Vi Angelica, visit to hell, it was a 15 year old girl and she, she's got millions of people who have now watched on YouTube and commented. She literally went to hell, died and went to hell. Um, and the Lord shot above hell and heaven. Um, God is real, the scriptures are actually real. And what God says will happen, or is going to happen, is certainly going to happen. Yeah. Anyway, anyway, it says, Therefore are they before the throne of God, and serve him day and night in his temple. And he, sh he that sitteth on the throne shall dwell among them. So it's saying that God himself, they will actually be in the presence of God Almighty himself. The scripture said those Christians who are alive and make it through the great the tribulation and the great tribulation will actually be in the presence of God Almighty forever and ever and ever and ever. They will never leave his presence and he will never leave them again. In other words, they will be protected, safe from harm forever. If you could read it. And now many people say, oh yes, but I wouldn't like to live forever. But people don't understand this. When we die or when the Lord Jesus Christ comes again we will be given immortal bodies that cannot die number one number two we will no longer be subject to time so time will be no more so time will not seem as it seems now the, the scripture says in the book of Peter that a day with the Lord that a thousand years a day with the Lord is as a thousand years and a thousand years as a day yeah. so, so in God's re reckoning of things, because God lives outside of times with his angels and, and his supernatural being, to them, a thousand years is just like one day. So, so and, a, and a day of a thousand. So, so there's no reckoning of time in the kingdom of God. Or in the spiritual realm, there is no reckoning of time. Yes. So, 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 yeah, and, and so, when it, so it's, it's difficult for the human mind mm or the physical mind to comprehend living outside of time right. and that's why when we live outside of time those who live outside of time will never die will never grow old because you're not living in time you're not subject to time and you're literally like a time lord living outside of time that's why jesus christ can never age god the father can never age because they live outside of time they are living in eternity read on Verse 16. Go ahead. They shall hunger no more, 
not thirst any more, neither shall the sun light on them, nor any heat. So all hunger, you know, in remembrance, I think remembrance there, when we remember those who fell in, wor in the world wars, the last two world wars, World War One and World War Two. There have, we have a re remembrance. I believe it's the 11th of the 11th, the 11th of November, isn't it? Every year, at 11, 11, 11, 11, right? And they, this is what what they actually recite. They say they shall, you know, the, 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 the chant that they make. They say they shall hunger no more, neither thirst any more, neither shall the sun light on them, nor any heat. They they recite that, um, and they recite it as an emphasis of of, of the difficulty and the difficult time that uh, the soldiers went through during World War One, during World War Two, it was a struggle. Yeah. Here, the, you know, during the tribulation, the great tribulation, the tribulation is great tribulation, that seven year period, as I said, the first three and a half year period, the Antichrist comes out as a false messiah for a period of time. Yes. But the second three and a half year period, he reveals his true colors. Um, the Jews, Israel says, realize that they've made an agreement with death and with hell they're in agreement but, but it's too late but these people that actually get through the tribulation and are faithful to God it says they will hunger them also during the great tribulation there's going to be a hunger many people will be starving to death as the black horse rides yeah. they will actually literally be starving to death no food because if, if for example Revelation 13 if those who do not accept the mark of the beast or worship his image or his name or so forth they will not be able to buy or so that means they will not be able to eat or drink so they will, they will be hunger they, those people will be hungry yes. it said they shall hunger no more neither thirst anymore those that eat and drink yes. neither shall the sun light on them yes. nor any heat that many of them will lose their homes that's to be living outside in the heat no shade yeah and verse 17 says for the lamb which is in the midst of the throne shall feed them and shall lead them into unto living fountains of water and God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes so it's saying from that point on in, in with this God will be their sustenance and God will keep them and God will shield them and God will bring them through uh, I, I've actually had a prayer request this evening to pray for Nina and I'd just like to pray for Nina again we received a testimony we, we prayed for Nina was it two weeks ago on the yes, radio station yes, live on the radio. and